don't know, mate. What are we gonna do? I've got, I've got to get this V4 finished, and it's so easy to get distracted. Well, I was just going in the kitchen, you know, and then there was inspiration right there. Johnny, mate, what do you mean there's inspiration everywhere? What are you talking about? You'll see. Potato, 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 potato. So in this video, I'm going to give you the rundown, the whole story on how I took an idea and turned it into a running prototype. So, cast your mind back to 2024, the month of May. Now, I don't know what you were doing, but what I was doing was mindlessly scrolling Instagram. Now, I came across a post, I was feeling inspired. Now, this is the post in question, the Hustler Bad Boy Chopper. And when I saw this, I just knew I had to get into contact with Tim O'Connor. So Tim is the owner, founder, manufacturer, does the marketing. He does everything in between for Hustler Mini Bikes. So after seeing this post and feeling inspired, um, I just had to send him a message and hopefully he would get back to me. And it didn't take long for me to hear back from Tim. So after a couple messages back and forth, um, he asked if he could ring me, and we spoke on the phone, we talked about what I want out of this, and funnily enough, I didn't actually know what I wanted. I just wanted to collaborate and get some clout for my YouTube. But Tim said, do you want to make engines? It could be profitable, and I ummed and ahed and thought about it, and then realised, yeah, why not, let's give it a crack. That would be the dream job, getting paid to make engines, the engines I want to make. And this is where I would like to thank today's video sponsor, JLC CNC. Making parts with JLC CNC is as easy as dropping your file onto the website in a supported format and getting an instant quote. From there, you can select your material, any finishing required, such as anodizing or bead blasting, and then select your surface roughness. You also get a choice of tolerances. Um, there are also a few other options to choose from in regards to thread and sub-assembly. From there you will get an instant quote which will be extremely cost effective. You can see for yourself when we compare this to the same quote from a competitor. Once you've ordered your parts, you will see them, well in my case, it's usually about 7 days and this frees me up to carry on with other aspects of the project and get these projects finished in a reasonable amount of time. Big thanks to JLC CNC. So around this time I was rewiring a CNC router for a friend and that would be instrumental in getting the foam patterns made in a very short time frame. But before making these foam patterns I needed to finalize my design. Now there's a lot that goes into one of these designs. It's not a fabric cobbled engine, you know, two engines chopped apart and welded together. This is a one-off purpose-built motor. So there's a lot to think about. You have your conrods, are they gonna be one piece, two piece, in this case, three pieces? Are you gonna have plane bearings or roller bearings? Is it gonna be pressure fed, splash lubricated? Are you running overhead valve, side valve, push rods, timing belts, timing chains. There are a lot of choices to make. And ideally, you don't wanna be making every single part a bespoke item. So I got to work reusing what I could and making parts that I had to make. The only restrictions that I had were the form factor had to be similar to a GX200 and it needed a three quarter inch output shaft. Otherwise, I was free to do as I pleased. Bearing in mind, I wanted that 60 degree V-twin, 
or at least as narrow as possible to get that um, quintessential potato potato rumble once all of the foam was machined and glued together it was time for casting now the casting went pretty well we got two good castings out of three attempts that's a win for me the best two out of three um, and then it was full noise into getting these machined to accept bearings the crankshaft cylinders etc All of the casting was done and out of the way it was time to move on with the machining so all of the machining was done on my lathe and my optimum MH28V CNC mill um, I converted it a couple of years ago for the first engine I did but for the most part I used it manually or hand program just to drill holes and bore the holes for the bearings. Uh, if you're interested in more of the details about the machining, just check out the other videos on my channel where I covered off roughly how I machined all of my castings to get them as accurate as needed for use in an engine. So with that, we had the first and second half of the crankcases machined. The crankshaft itself had been machined and all that was left to do was come up with a conrod. So I 3D printed it in a couple of iterations and decided to start with the link rod and I made this myself. So there's a whole video on that but after making the link rod I decided making the master rod on my mill would take a solid couple of days so I opted to use a third party vendor much better equipped than myself to do the bulk of the work on that and then I handled all of the precision finishing and then from there it was time to assemble the engine and turn it over So once I was sure the thing was good enough to turn over and the rods weren't going to fly apart, nothing was hitting where it shouldn't and the oil pump was pumping oil, um, it was time to cough the engine into life. Now the last thing I was going to do was the manifolds, so I was waiting on intake manifolds, but in the meantime I decided I would get a syringe or baster whatever you want to call it and I would directly fill the cylinders up with petrol and then from there I would turn it over with my cordless drill and we would see it cough into life. You ready? And the manifolds arrived just in time so I rushed out to the garage, bolted them onto the engine and got it started up and this was the first time I had the engine running and idling continuously After running it up for a couple of minutes a few times I realized when I show this to Tim it is going to sound like a bubble gun like it is shooting bubbles so I quickly fabricated the fastest exhaust I've ever made I had some 33 OD stainless pipe and I had some 20 millimeter OD tube lying around and I cobbled together something that resembled a two into two exhaust system that contorted its way around the engine still allowing me to start it and then I gave it one more start at home before telling Tim I was ready to come for a visit.
So with that, I sent a video to Tim. He was stoked. He couldn't wait for me to come and visit with the engine in hand. So I made a plan. I would drive from the sprawling metropolis that is Palmerston North to Whangaparaua, where Tim and Hustler minibikes are based. So whilst I was with Tim in Auckland, we looked at refinements that could be made, some small design choices, moving the manifolds, test fitting the engine into a bad boy chopper frame. Um, and the thing looked amazing. You can see and hear it for yourself. Where to from here? Um, if you're interested in buying one of these things or um, you want to see more about them, make sure to give Tim a follow on Instagram. Look forward to the next video.